guys, it's Natasha. Welcome back to my channel. So I just filmed a hair tutorial for you guys. It's how I straighten my hair. Um, so I thought while I've got all my stuff out, I'd film another video for you guys. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I paint my nails with one arm. Um, I get a lot of questions on how I paint my nails. Um, and a lot of people just assume that I get them done. Um, like at a salon or that my mum does it for me and sometimes yeah my mum will do it for me um, it really just depends I mean I get um, I've got chronic pain in all my limbs so sometimes my little arm here will get quite sore because I use this hand to paint my nails as you'll see in a minute um, and some days I just can't do it um, it's just like my hair some days I can put my hair up by myself and some days I can't you know we're all like that some days we can do things and then we come to do it the next day and we just get really flustered and we just can't do it. So we have someone else do it. Um, and that's what it's like quite a bit of the time for amputees. We have to have someone else help us or do it for us. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, I thought I would show you guys how I do it. Because like I said, a lot of people do ask me. Um, so I don't paint my nails a lot of the time. So for school, we weren't allowed to have our nails done. I mean, I'm 21 now, but back in college and all that, we weren't allowed to have our nails painted um, and I like really bright colours I like red and pinks and you know um, so I didn't have them painted for that and because I was a horse rider as well I tend to find that it got like I got dirt and stuff stuck under my nails a lot and I was washing my hands a lot so the nail polish would just come off and chip and my nails would break all the time um, and then when I left school well I left school in 2015 um, it's turning into like a story. Um, I left halfway through the year because we, me and my family moved to Christchurch. I was in Nelson then, we moved down here. I didn't finish school. Um, but the following year, in 2016, I did a course in baking. I did career baker. Um, so that was a year and we weren't allowed to have our nails painted or have any false nails for that. Um, so I didn't have my nails done. And But now I do like to have my nails painted. I don't get them done professionally it costs quite a bit and I find that because I only have one hand painted a lot of places charge me for having two hands painted if that makes sense even though they don't paint my little fingers because if you can see you can see in there the little fingers I do paint them um so yeah a lot of places will charge me for doing both even though I'm only doing the one so that's just it's stupid it's a waste of money and I mean why would you because it's half the time half the products so I don't know so I thought I'd show you how I do that so I chose it in a very nice pink color my mum brought it back from England when she came last year it looks like that it's called Shiz in Fashion and it's Leighton Denny I think so I did have them painted the other day so there are a few like little cracks there I really need to like clean them mm. so they're filed pretty short they were so nice and long last week but then all of them broke and then I had this one was really nice and long and I was washing my hair last night in the shower and it broke and I was like I literally had tears my eyes anyway um so I'm gonna get the camera sorted so you can see down so I'll be back in a minute Okay, so hopefully this works. Um, I've never shot from this angle before, so hopefully the camera doesn't tip over. And sorry, you can see my boobs. Um, okay, so so I really hope this camera doesn't tip over because it's like really wonky. Okay, and I hope you guys can see this. So I unscrew the lid, obviously, and then I'll try and wipe off the excess. And then what I'll do is I'll take the lid and I'll wrap it because I have an elbow I know a lot of people don't have elbows or their um, stump is what it's generally called which is an awful word but the arm will they don't have an elbow so it will end like here um, but this is just how I do it so I hope it is like informative and someone out there can you know find it useful so I wrap it around like you can see it so you can kind of see it like that so I wrap it around like that and then I'll just start painting my nails so I'm not the neatest I have practiced a lot with this so I've been painting my own nails probably since I was like a little girl a little girl 
I have a bowl full of nail polish colours. Um, like I said, I love all colours. So as you can see, that's not the neatest. Um, but what I do is I go in with a cotton bud and I'll just wipe it up later. So I generally have to put my hand down. If you have really shaky hands like I do, um, just lean it on the um, on your table. And just take your time with it, you know. I'm just praying that this camera doesn't fall over. Sometimes, some days I'm a lot better at it than others. Um, it depends, because I have quite shaky hands. So like I said, if I just can't do it that day, I'll get my mum to do it. Um, but yeah, I am thinking of getting um, acrylics. I'm probably going to get my nails done before I go overseas this year. And I'll probably just get like acrylics. I'll probably treat myself. I've never had acrylics because like I said, you know, being a baker and doing horse riding, you couldn't have acrylic nails. And I worked in a surf market and I was a um, checkout operator, so trying to handle um, like groceries and opening bags with acrylic nails just... Oh, mayday. Okay, I think we're good. Sorry, we had a little wobble. So like I said, um, working in a supermarket and handing groceries and opening bags was just near impossible with acrylics. Um, I know a lot of girls did it, but they were kind of used to it. If I rocked up one day with acrylic nails and I couldn't do my job, I'd be a bit annoyed. And then I do paint my little nails. It is really hard because they are really tiny. Um, and yes, I do have nails on my little stump. Um, so we call my arm um, pillow. And that is because when I was born, my sister Victoria, she was five. Um, so she's five years older than me. And she thought it was soft and squidgy like a pillow, which it is. It's really soft. And sometimes I will actually sleep on it. Like if I'm lying on the couch or my bed, I will put my rest my head on it because it is really like soft and which is really weird to some people. Ooh. I'm so sorry, this is like falling. Anyway, um, so yeah, it is called Pillow. So I do have nails um, on Pillow, a lot of people don't. So what it's called is, like my disability, is congenital below... I'm just going to hold this is congenital below right elbow amputation. Congenital congenital means born with. Um, so a lot of people are not don't have congenital. A lot of people were in an accident or had um, maybe a disease or an illness and they had to have their um, arm or leg um, amputated. So yeah, a lot of people um, who are arm amputees don't have fingers. So I have the arm but not the length. So, so a lot of people have the length, so their two arms will be the same length, but they won't have the hand like I do. So if you can, it's going to like move the camera, but if you can see, I have a palm, and so I have a palm there, and then I have five fingers. Um, so yeah, I have the hand, but not the length, so my right arm is shorter than my left arm, which is fine. Um... I'm just going to try and move this up so I can, so you can see me. There we go, it's a bit wonky but I really couldn't care. Um, so yeah, I have the, oh, it's annoying me now. I think that's a bit better. Um, so yeah, I have the hand, but not the length, but I do have an elbow. Um, but obviously my arms, that's my elbow, so they are a lot shorter. Um, so a lot of people don't have fingers like mine, um, or they'll have some type of little finger. Um, apparently when I was a baby, the doctor, or our doctor said to mum um, that they should amputate my fingers because they're going to get in the way. I'm so glad they didn't because um, she was mortified. She was like, no, um, because I use my little fingers for everything. 
uh, well for a lot of things like when I tie my hair up um, when I grab a hair tie I'll use when I'm like tying it up um, I've I have done a hair tutorial for you guys so go check that out and you might see what I mean I wrap I grab the hair tie with my little fingers and like wrap that around um, yeah I use them for so much um, so yeah I'm thanks mom and dad for not getting them amputated um, so I mean having a disability isn't a bad thing this was just going to be like a nail video but I was going to do um, like my amputee story so I might as well just do that as one because then I've just got to explain it to you guys again um, so yeah I like I said I was born like this um, they did know when I was in my mum's tummy um, when I was in the womb um, they did see from ultrasound that something wasn't quite right they didn't know exactly what it would look like but they knew that um, I didn't have a whole arm and so apparently the first thing they looked at when I was born was my little arm and it was so adorable um, like I'll try and find a picture for you guys but my little stump obviously it was like really short um, and it was so so cute it was so adorable um, so yeah I mean as a toddler like I didn't know any different so it didn't really bother me um, but when I was in primary school I had a prosthetic arm well from like when I was a toddler to when I was in primary school I had a prosthetic arm we called it Fred um, I hated wearing a prosthetic arm because I felt so different um, we would go to Wellington every couple of years to get a new one fitted so that was a really fun day because mum and dad would mum or dad would go with me for the day and it was fun but I just I didn't like the limb centre um, and I just didn't like wearing a prosthetic I felt so different and there were days like in primary school where I'd actually hide my prosthetic arm Fred um, I'd hide it under the bed or behind the door so that when it came time for me to put it on and go to school mum couldn't find it so it'd just be like oh we don't have time just don't wear it and so in the end they were like why make her wear something that she doesn't like or she doesn't want to do um so I didn't wear it and I've never worn a prosthetic arm again um and they're quite uncomfortable especially in the summer you get really sweaty and even though you can wear um like a, a sock like a sleeve um it gets really s sore and sweaty so you wear the sock and then inside the prosthetic there's a plastic kind of like cup and your arm goes in there and that's really uncomfortable and I mean you can work with your prosthetic guy I'm not sure what they're called but the doctor who does all the prosthetics you can work with them um, to make it as comfortable as you can but yeah I just really didn't like it and trying to get a seven eight year old to do something they don't like is near impossible I remember one day it's a really funny story I was in primary school I was in the juniors so I was about six we had a subject or we did something in another class and I accidentally left my arm on the coat hangers in the um, cloakroom and after school I went in and I said to the teacher um have you seen my arm I left it in here and it was hanging on the cloak hangers like coat hangers what are they called it was really funny um but yeah so I hated wearing that and I just think my whole like teenage years I really struggled with having a little arm because being a teenager is hard enough and I was overweight um, and so when you go to school especially in college that was really hard um, when I went to college I was 12 13 when I first went um, in year 9 I really did struggle because I was like oh my god why am I so different and you know when you're about 13 14 you want boys to notice you and I was like no guy is gonna want me because of my arm um, and like I said I was overweight as well um, and I just thought I was so hideous and I just really struggled and I look back on it now and I if I have if I had the confidence back then that I do now I would have been so much better I'm so comfortable with my arm now sure there are times that you know like when little kids stare at you they're like whispering to their mums or their friends like why is she you know why is she, why is she got a little arm that can be a bit embarrassing especially when I'm with other people when I'm with my family or by myself I'm fine I generally explain to them um, 
what you know I was just born like that and stuff like that but when I'm with my friends it can be a bit embarrassing especially when I back then when I was in college when I could staring at it I was mortified if I was by myself I just ignored it but when I was with other people I was so embarrassed and I actually had to have counseling for it for quite, quite a long time because I really struggled with it um but yeah and so when I was about 12 I started horse riding lessons at um, the Richmond Riding for the Disabled. I absolutely loved it. I, oh my god, I enjoyed it so much. I had a horse there called Snap, um, Snap Time. He was a bay 16 two hand gelding. He was the most gorgeous, gorgeous horse. And my battery's now. Um, I'm going to see how long we can go. So yeah, he was the most gorgeous horse. I did lessons for about five years and my confidence just blossomed um we mainly worked on balance because of my one arm i am unbalanced so i do struggle with balance um but yeah so we worked on balance i was going to compete but i had a few falls and that really knocked my confidence um so we didn't end up i didn't end up competing but yeah i just i loved riding every week um, and yeah, my confidence had really blossom. But when I moved, it's when I moved to Christchurch that my confidence with my arm really got better. So I was 17, I was a month off turning 18, something like that. Um, when we moved to Christchurch, we lived in Merivale, we live in Marihau now. Um, when I moved there, I got a job. And working with um, in customer service, like I was a checkout operator at Fresh Choice, um, and being, you know, with the public every day, that really helped my confidence. There were some really nasty people. Um, I had some kids come through my checkout, and they're about 13, 14, so they knew right from wrong, obviously. Um, and they said it was really busy, and we were there were massive queues, and I was on. Um, the till and there were lots of people next to me like my co-workers and they came up to me and I you know checked them out and stuff and they said that's really gross that's really weird I'm like what is and they pointed to my arm and said that and I just kind of shoved their change and their groceries in them and I just said bye and my manager was next to me and luckily she was the most amazing manager ever um I said to her Manu was her name and I said to her can I just go to the toilet she said, yeah, that's fine. I went to the toilet and I burst into tears. Because I've never had someone say that's gross before. Um, I got myself together. I came back and I was fine. Um, but that's really tra traumatised me. And I had another lady say, um, she had a young girl with her, maybe three or four. And she came through my checkout and the mum said to the lady, said to the little girl, what's that girl missing? And the little girl said, oh, her arm. And the mum said, oh, zombies ate it. The zombies ate her arm. I was mortified because I was actually serving someone else at the time. They were just in line. And I went bright red. And I cried and cried and cried. And I told my co-worker later on. And then my other co-worker, Jacob, he overheard it. And I told him. And I think he told my boss. Um, which I'm really glad he did. I think that's how it went. It was a while ago. My memory's not that great. Um, so yeah, that was really traumatising. Um, and I've had a few other nasty comments and people just trying to take things from me and do it like when I went to open a bag and put it on the um if you work in a supermarket you know what I'm talking about put it on the the little holders so they hold the bag open um the little plastic metal things um they would grab that from me and do it themselves because I think they thought I couldn't do it I actually had scratches one day from a woman um she scratched my arm and she did it and my hand started to bleed um, so yeah, that wasn't very nice, but working with the public, it just made me blossom, and I joke about my arm now, like, I'm so, so much more confident, um, and, you know, I can do so much, I can horse ride, I can do makeup really well, I can swim, I can float, um, I can do my hair, I can bake, I can do so much, um, and, so yeah, I mean, I do struggle with things from day to day, 
but I will just ask my family for help and they are so used to it that they actually forget that I have a little arm they'll be like oh, why do you need help with that they're like oh right um so they never overtake they never just take things from me and do it and I hate when people do that so if you see someone with a disability struggling you can go up to them and ask them do you need help but don't take it from them don't just grab it from them because they won't like that we hate that well I hate that anyway and I know a lot of people with amputees don't like that because we like to do things ourselves and I know back in college um sports I hated sports I mean I'm not a sporty person I like sports that are that you do by yourself like horse riding or swimming or you know something like that ball sports like rugby cricket netball I hated because I had to hold the ball and throw the ball and like hit a bat or something different and so when you're 13, 14, you're overweight and you have a disability and you have to do things a certain way, a different way. And that may look a bit weird. Well, not weird, but different. But you think to other people it looks weird. Um, when you have to do that, it's a nightmare. So I tried to get out of sports as much as I could. Um, I hated doing that. Um, and especially when, like, you know, boys are around and they're cute and you want them to notice you and you have to do things a different way. You think it looks really weird. Um, so yeah, um, but if I could tell my 13, 14 year old self something now, it would be, don't care what other people think. Like, you are beautiful, you are gorgeous, and your arm does not define you. Like, I'm really glad, I, if I could relive my life over, I wouldn't be born with two arms. I love my disability. Um, I love having a little arm, and there are perks of having a disability, you know, <laughs> um, but I, I'll go into that another day, um, but yeah, I would just tell myself to be more confident, and like I said, if I had the confidence that I do now, back in high school, I would have rocked high school, or college as I call it, I would have rocked, I would have been so confident, and I'm so, so glad that I have the confidence that I do today, and yeah. So if you are a teenager and you have a disability like mine, just, I know it's hard, it's so difficult, but just try not to care about what other people think. You're beautiful, do you, be you, and don't care what other people say. If someone asks you what happened and you don't feel comfortable telling them, just say, I don't really feel comfortable telling you, or I don't like talking about it, or just say, that's for me to know, for you to wonder about, or wonder about, whatever it's called. It's for me to know and for you to wonder about. Um, so yeah, just be strong and just try and have that confidence. And just remember, confidence doesn't come overnight. You do have to work at it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like this video. It started from now tutorial to a full story. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad I did it and I'll hopefully post it as soon as I can. So yeah, I hope you guys like my little tutorial and my little story. Um, I'm sorry for the really bad lighting. Um, so yeah. I hope you guys like it and stay tuned and see what comes next time. Bye guys!